In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between molecular formulas and empirical formulas. A molecular formula gives us the exact number, and we're going to put emphasis on exact, the exact number of atoms in a molecule. Molecule is a word that, you know, everybody's heard of and most people have a really good understanding of what a molecule is, but I want to give you a chemist's definition of a molecule. Chemists define a molecule as two or more atoms that are held together by what we call a covalent bond covalent bond. Now a covalent bond is the result of sharing two electrons or more electrons between two atoms. So sharing two electrons or more between two atoms. And these two atoms that are sharing electrons we're going to make all kinds of arrows here. These two atoms that are sharing electrons, they are usually, almost always, they are either identical to each other. So two atoms of the exact same type, like two oxygen atoms or two hydrogen atoms, or they are two non-metals. So two things from the left side of the periodic table. Either way, regardless of whether they are identical to each other or they are two nonmetals, these are always going to be two atoms that can't ionize each other. Now, it's not two atoms that can't ionize. It's just two atoms that can't ionize each other. So let me go into some more detail about what I mean by ionizing each other. When we were looking at ionic compounds and ionic formulas, we looked at things like sodium chloride. The sodium chloride is the ionic compound that is formed between the sodium ion and the chlorine atom. And it's the result of the sodium ion being willing to give one of its electrons over to chlorine, which causes the sodium to become positively charged and the chlorine to become negatively charged. And those two charged particles are held together by their attractive forces, which we call an ionic bond. But what would happen if we bring two chlorine atoms together with each other, um, which we can do. We bring two chlorine atoms together and chlorines, as we've talked about many times, chlorine atoms want to become anions. So they want each of them wants to gain electrons. Neither one of them is willing to give up an electron. So we will not see one chlorine transferring electrons to the other. They both just want to pick up electrons. These two electrons are, or these two atoms cannot ionize each other because neither one of them is willing to donate an electron to the other. So when two chlorine atoms come together, they do not come together ionically, rather they come together covalently where they're sharing electrons, which we'll talk more about how this sharing exists. And the compound that is formed between these two atoms is called a molecule and not an ionic compound. Let me erase these pictures to make room for what we're actually gonna be talking about here. Let me give you um, some examples of molecular formulas. So here come some examples. Um, O3. And with this notation, which is similar to the notation we use for ionic compounds, this gives us the type of atom as well as the number of atoms in that formula. So the three means three oxygen atoms. C6H12O6. Again, this notation is telling us that we have six carbon atoms we have 12 hydrogen atoms and we have six oxygen atoms in this molecule. Um, and I've got a couple more. We have N2H4 and we're also going to write NH3. And so again, this notation tells us nitrogen atoms, there are two hydrogen atoms, there are four nitrogen atoms, there's only one, hydrogen atoms, there's three. So all of these are examples of molecular formulas. Here's an example where we have three identical atoms. So this would be meeting this criteria here. And the other ones are two or more 
non-metals. So all of the elements in these compounds are from the right-hand side of the periodic table. All of these are non-metals. Let's talk now about empirical formulas. Empirical formulas gives the ratio, or it is the ratio, of atoms And an empirical formula can be applied to either a molecule or an ionic compound. So the empirical formula is not an exact number, but rather it's a ratio. And we have practice, even though we haven't called it this, we have practiced writing empirical formulas for ionic compounds. In one of the previous slides, we looked at SN, I think it was SN204, and we talked about how we should reduce this formula down to the simplest set of numbers, which I believe was SNO2. And this, what we did here in this, was the concept of using the empirical formula, even though we didn't call it that. That's exactly what it was. So the empirical formula is just taking these molecular formulas and reducing them down to the simplest ratio. So for O3, um, when there's only one type of atom in the molecule, we cannot really write an empirical formula for it. So we'll just keep this as O3. For something like C6H12O6, we can write an empirical formula for this guy. If we divide each one of these subscripts by six, we're gonna come up with an empirical formula of CH2O. So again, this is the result of just dividing all of these numbers by six to give us the smallest ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. For N2H4, same thing. We're looking for the smallest ratio between the nitrogen and the hydrogen atoms, which is gonna come from dividing each one of these subscripts by two. And so that will give us the formula of NH2, that is the empirical formula. And then last but not least, down here, NH3, sometimes we cannot simplify them any more than they already are, like in this case, NH3. If any one of the atoms in a molecule has a subscript of one, then it's already in its simplest form and it cannot be further simplified. So again, all of these in this left-hand side, these are all molecular formulas. And all of the ones in the right-hand side, these are all empirical formulas.